you all so much for joining us today. My name is Billy Begala, and I am Senator Eckhart's Communications Director. Um, we're here to announce the filing of the Mike Ramos Act, uh, and we're joined by Senator Eckhart, uh, by Ms. Brenda Ramos, Mike Ramos's mother, as well as Chris Harris from Texas Appleseed, which is a, uh, an advocacy group promoting social justice here in Texas. So the way that we're gonna uh, run this is we're gonna have a brief opening remarks from all of our speakers here, and then we'll turn uh, the floor over to y'all in the press to ask questions. Um, so once we do get to that portion, if you have a question, please uh, raise your hand by clicking the raise hand uh, icon in the reactions tab on Zoom. We'll do our best to call on everyone in the order that you raise your hand. And if we don't get to your question, please let me know. Uh, and feel free to reach out and our office would be happy to get back to you. So without further ado, um, I will turn things over to Senator Eckhart. Senator, take it away. Thanks so much for y'all's interest in this uh, really important step forward in uh, criminal justice reform. I wanna start by thanking Brenda Ramos, Mrs. Ramos, uh, your tremendous strength and advocacy in grief is uh, uh, really is uh, an illustration to all of us of of, of how to make our world better, so thank you. I also wanna thank Senators West and Miles. Oh, there you are, Senator West, it's good to see you. Uh, Senator West and Senator Miles are both joint authors on the Mike Ramos Act. Uh, and I also wanna thank, of course, Representative Rodriguez for being the house sponsor of the Mike Ramos Act. Uh, the Mike Ramos Act is one of many bills this legislative session that address systemic uh, inequalities in our criminal justice system, systemic inequalities that have uh, had such an incredibly uh, negative, harmful, even deadly effect on communities of color. And I believe that the Mike Ramos Act will help address some of those institutional flaws. Uh, the Mike Ramos Act would require the release of body cam footage following the use of deadly force by a police officer. Uh, this footage would first be released to members and staff of existing civilian oversight uh, bodies. Next, it would be released to the attorneys representing uh, those who are depicted on the video and their uh, close relatives uh, for the individual who uh, was killed during the altercation. And third, it would be released to the public. It's important to note that under existing law, uh, the release of the video footage is rather subjective um, and it's a decision of law enforcement. Uh, this bill would remove that subjectivity and make clear that body cam footage is important for law enforcement and for defense and for the public. Uh, that uh, body cam footage um, uh, must be available to all three for us to truly have trust in our criminal justice system. So additionally, the Mike Ramos Act would no longer allow the withholding of information about an investigation that did not result in criminal conviction or deferred adjudication. The Mike Ramos Act would also give TCOL, the Texas Commission on Law Enforcement, additional oversight. TCOL would set uh, standards for use of force and de-escalation and make those standards and that training available to all law enforcement across the state of Texas. Uh, and very importantly, the Mike Ramos Act uh, would then uh, have T. Cole uh, able to remove peace officers, uh, remove their licenses if they have a history of threatening public welfare, uh, a very important provision of the law. So uh, with that, uh, I would like to um, uh, recognize uh, Senator Royce West for his comments. Senator West, I believe you're on mute. Right, I'm just unmuting myself. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, first of all, I'm going to thank Senator Eckhart for sponsoring this particular bill and I look forward to working with her on this particular issue. If, if you notice, there is a trend that's been established this session like none before. This is a session where we're dealing with social justice issues and people are making it a priority to do so. We're dealing with police accountability and then looking at what needs to be done. Let me be real clear. I have a lot of friends in law enforcement. I'm a former assistant district attorney. I want to make certain that if a police officer leaves home in the morning, they go back home in the evening. But likewise, I want to make certain that when citizens leave home in the morning, they have done nothing so 
detrimental to the norms of society that they end up being able to go back home that evening, not end up dead. And from that vantage point, we need to kind of relook at TCLO, which is the organization that uh, oversees the licensing of police officers and give them uh, power because that, right now they're a toothless tiger. Uh, this legislation, as well as other legislation that's being filed, uh, says that TCLO should be the responsible agency that deals with issues of de-escalation that's talked about in the Ram uh, Ramos bill. Uh, also help define exactly what the policy should be concerning the use of deadly force and that they should invite persons of uh, all stakeholders, uh, law enforcement, advocacy groups, the public to sit down with them and come up with a model policy concerning the use of deadly force that is uniformly adopted by each agency, police and law enforcement agency in the state of Texas. When you begin to look at the issue as the Ramos bill does concerning the use of body cameras. Yes, I passed that bill years ago and had to make certain concessions in order to get it passed. But we know what the impact of that particular bill has been in terms of uh, providing another perspective, if you will, on exactly the interaction between police officers and, and to that particular end, yes, we had to settle at that point in time where it would not be quote unquote, um, the camera footage would not be looked at unless uh, the police chief said that it could be. Uh, I agree with my colleague that we should shine the light of the sunlight on these on these body camera on body camera footage so all persons get an opportunity to see exactly what transpired. And so from that vantage point, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to work with my freshman colleagues, Sarah Eckhart, who's hit the ground running, obviously with many years of experience uh, here in Travis County as your county judge. And so I look forward to working with you. And Sarah, thank you for allowing me to be a part of the Ramos bill. Thank you so much, Royce. I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. Thank you so much, Senator West. And next, I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Brenda Ramos for, for a brief sit statement. Ms. Ramos, feel free to take it away. Uh, Ms. Ramos, I believe you're on mute. Uh, if you could click the mute button in the bottom left corner of your screen, we will, we'll be able to hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> My name is Brenda Ramos. My son, Mike, my only child was killed by Austin police 10 months ago. Mike was my everything. Sometimes, sometimes I feel so broken and alone, but I made a promise to myself and to my son that I would do everything I can to stop my nightmare from happening to another family. Everyone seen the awful video. My son was shot in the head. As he slowly drove away from the police toward a dead end block by dumpsters, my son was unarmed. The video plays over and over in my head when I try to sleep and the gunshots haunts me. But the most sort of part of me as a mother is Mike's confusion and fear before he got in the car. All these Austin police officers screamed and screamed and screamed at him with guns drawn. I'm his mom, but anyone can hear the confusion and fear in his voice. And I hear him say, y'all, are scaring me. Why y'all got guns? Don't shoot y'all. What is going on? They just screamed and screamed with no, with so many guns pointing at him. Why couldn't they have slowed down? Why did they all need to scream at the same time? Why didn't they just answer his question? His hands were in the air as he had already turned in a circle with his shirt up. There was no weapon. Why did they continue to scream threats? Why did they escalate to violence? 
why can't they understand that anyone could be scared out of their mind with all those threats and guns? Why could they have spoken to him like he was a human being? Like he was somebody's son? Like he mattered at all? It means everything to me that this law, the Michael Mike Robles Act will train police to escalate rather than escalate like they did to my son. The Mike Ramos Act will save other mothers from what I suffered. I am so grateful to my Senator and all of the people who stand with me for justice for my son. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Ramos. Uh, and thank you for joining us here today. Um, Lastly, I would like to turn things over to Chris Harris from Texas Appleseed. Chris, go ahead. Thank you so much. And, and, and thank you, uh, Ms. Ramos. Um, I'm, I'm in awe of your bravery and continued advocacy on, on behalf of your son and your family. And um, I'm really sorry that, that you have to continue to uh, talk about this and, in order to continue to push and seek justice. And, uh, and I really, uh, really do hope that, um, that, this, that this bill uh, in combination with, with some of the other bills that are up at this session are, are gonna help really to move the needle on this issue and, and prevent needless death. I wanna thank Senator Eckhart, Senator West, Senator Miles, uh, Representative Rodriguez and the other members of the local delegation that have signed on to this important legislation. Um, you know, I think it, it really um, it could be in a very impactful uh, bill. Um, the TCO Sunset Report uh, that was released last year uh, discussed how over 600 officers were dishonorably discharged. Uh, and of those more than a quarter, uh, I believe it was 2019, uh, were rehired elsewhere at another law enforcement agency in Texas. And so what this bill is designed to do, and, and obviously that's with different standards uh, for conduct, for discipline across agencies. And so what this bill I think will, will really help to do is to, to create uniform standards, particularly as it relates to use of force uh, and to uh, misconduct uh, that will require um, de-licensing to help ensure that uh, people with a history of serious misconduct don't get to stay uh, as police officers and aren't able to simply move to another jurisdiction and get rehired elsewhere. Um, this bill also will, I think, address some of the issues that um, Ms. Ramos and, and other families have faced in accessing body cam footage. And, and we know the impact that the release of the footage uh, of Mike has had on this community and on the path that we're seeing towards justice in this case. And so, you know, we're hopeful that it's going to help other families, uh, folks like the family of Daryl Zamal Jr. in San Antonio, who, um, you know, it took months for them to get to see it and it still hasn't been released publicly. And so, um, again, just very thankful to, uh, to all the legislators for, uh, for filing this important piece of legislation, as well as, again, to, to Ms. Ramos for her continued bravery and advocacy. And, and we're happy to support. And thank you so much for the time. Thank you so much, Chris, uh, and thank you to, to Senator West and, and Ms. Ramos again for joining us. Um, I'd now like to open up the floor for questions from the press. Uh, if you have a question, please go ahead and raise your hand uh, by clicking on the reactions tab, um, and we'll do our best to ask in the order that y'all appear. And before you ask your question, please, if you could just say uh, who the question is directed to and what uh, publication you're coming from, that would be greatly appreciated. But first, I see Adela Uchida. Uh, Adela, take it away. Uh, Ms. Uchida, I believe you're on mute. Got it. Um, I'm Adela Uchida with CBS Austin, and my question is directed to Senator Eckhart and to Brenda Ramos. Um, there's a long history of, of people of color being killed by police, as we know, and we've seen, particularly since Ferguson, I think in 2014, a lot of people coming out, a lot of protests, and a lot of laws being passed. How do you think this particular law will make a difference, or is this just a step along a longer journey? Like, how is this, how is this being framed? 
Ms. Ramos, uh, I, I defer to you and then and I'll happily follow up. Um, your advocacy is so powerful in this space that I'm, I'm here for you as backup. And, and let's like take it. Question, please. Brenda, it's Rebecca. So they're asking you what this bill means to you and whether this is the first step on a long process. This is a small piece of good news for me and my son, but we still have a long way to go to achieve justice. And what I, what I would say is that it's very important, as a former prosecutor, um, Senator West and I both share a, a, a background uh, as prosecutors. It's important that we uh, train and rehearse for these moments so that de-escalation becomes the norm, uh, that we don't have incidents like what you witness on the video where Mike was, his body language, his speech, everything that he was doing was trying to communicate to officers that he was not armed and he had no idea what was happening. But the yes. officers were, were, they were performing what they had rehearsed. They were, they, their guns were drawn and they were yelling. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, we, we need to speak clearly with our law enforcement community uh, about standards, uh, uh, about training, uh, de-escalation, body language, um, and then for police officers who simply are not a, a, not a, a right fit for that kind of work and, and are uh, unable to, to de-escalate in those moments, we need to be able to remove them from law enforcement. Uh, so I think that the training is a, a big part of the change, but I also think the sunshine is a big part of the change. Uh, body cam footage is a huge step forward uh, for all of us, but only if it's available to law enforcement, prosecution, def you know, prosecution, defense, and the public. Because at the end of the day, prosecution and defense are, uh, serve the public. So the public needs to be able to see these videos. All right, now. Can I say something? Oh. Sure thing, Ms. Ramos. <laughs> yes. Um, I have, when I seen the, cam, the camera uh, footage, uh, his face expression, and he was so angry. And that's how he gets when he's telling the truth. He was trying, he told them the truth, and they kept on and kept on with him. He's never had. And his life never, ever. He was so angry, and I could tell from the tone in his voice. It's just a, you know, mother's instinct. I've known him. He was so frightened at the end. He told them to put the guns down, and they did. Thank you, Ms. Ramos. Um, next, we, we have a question from Jolie McCullough. Jolie, go ahead. Um, hi, yeah, I'm with the Texas Tribune. Um, first of all, Ms. Ramos, uh, I just wanna say I'm so sorry for your loss. Um, my question is focusing more also on the body camera footage. So the, the bill is stated it, based on a first glance of a draft, it seems, um, that it will be it won't allow officers to first view uh footage before a statement would this require and and i'm just kind of trying to make sure i understand the wording of the bill would it require release of all body camera footage um within a certain time frame or is that like what is the re reference points in terms of when law enforcement has to release a, a foot footage of such an incident 
this particular piece of legislation doesn't set a timetable. What it does is it reverses the presumption. The presumption under the current law, and it had to be that way in order to, to push it through, as Senator West uh, indicated. Uh, there was uh, uh, the, the current law uh, creates a, a, a presumption that law enforcement, law enforcement can withhold the release. Um, this language flips that, that the presumption is that it must be released. Law enforcement then will have to argue back from that why uh, um, they think that it should not be. Um, so um, this legislation says it must be released. Of course, good law allows for a possibility where um, footage, uh, there might be a compelling reason, but the uh, law enforcement's gonna have to go convince a judge of that. Thank you. Thank you, Jolie. Uh, if anyone else has any questions, please feel free to go ahead and raise your hand and we'll call on you. We just have a few minutes left, so time for maybe one or two questions. Um, so I'll give you all a minute if there's anything else you'd like to ask. Um, if possible, if I can jump back in. Um, sure. Uh, I, I would love to ask um, senators as well as uh, Ms. Ramos, uh, how, you know, there's now news uh, that Christopher Taylor has been indicted on a murder charge. How, how does this, how does this, um, how do you feel about that, Ms. Ramos? I feel good, but there's still a long way to go. Just to start it. Thank you, Ms. Ramos. Uh, I see that Rudy Koski has a question. Rudy, go ahead. Hi, guys. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot for being with us today. Um, uh, Senators, uh, can you all both go back to that original question that, uh, that had just been made? The way that the, the law reads, and from my interview that I had with officials at CLEAT, was that uh, the police officer is not going to be allowed to review the video before making a statement. Uh, is that correct or is that a misread? Uh, it, it, I, I believe it would depend on uh, the law enforcement agency with regard to their oversight, uh, their existing civilian oversight body. Um, but, uh, of course, whenever there is a, a, a criminal action, a criminal investigation against anyone, whether they're a private civilian, whether they're a civilian or whether they're a law enforcement officer, um, the, the evidence uh, against them is made available to them. Uh, so I think that uh, uh, there's a, a level playing field already in the law without having to express it in this piece of legislation. If a person, whether uh, a, a peace officer or civilian is accused of a crime, um, the evidence must be made available to them in advance. And, and as a follow-up, um, you and both mentioned that y'all had a back. Yes, let Senator? Me, let me respond also. Uh, yes, sir. The fact is, is that, as you well know, this is a first step in terms of the legislation. And there's, there's several pieces of legislation that have been filed. I think that this adds additional issues that we need to discuss. We're gonna to need to sit down with law enforcement. And again, the other groups, as you well know, you've been around here for a while, in order to figure out exactly what we need to do. The objective of this law is to make certain that we have the training concerning de-escalation, that we look at the issues surrounding the release of the body camera. I never knew I, I knew what I had to do in order to get it passed, but obviously all laws evolve and we've got to make certain that the body camera law in terms of uh, releasing it is um, applicable to this time and this place and time. The other point I want to make is this. We're beginning to see more and more instances of where internal affairs and some of these police departments are doing their job now, as opposed to just uh, whitewashing uh, a shooting. They're actually investigating shootings now and they're filing charges, and then the process is working. I, I, I'm from Dallas. I know that before a few years ago, there were very few, if any, police officers that were indicted, yet alone found guilty by a jury and sentenced to the penitentiary for the, the death of a citizen. And then, as a follow up, um, it, there's no doubt, and, and I don't think that there's any debate that 
Mike's death is a tragic loss for, for everyone involved in, uh, in, in this case. Do you find it as prosecutors uh, a little problematic, though, that you have named this act for him before the case has been adjudicated? And do you think that that could cause problems in moving it forward? I don't believe that there's a problem. And I think that there's everything right about calling it the Mike Ramos Act. Uh, Mike Ramos uh, uh, um, was not engaged in any criminal activity and is not under any kind of further investigation. I think it's right and appropriate to call it the Mike Ramos Act, just as surely as it's uh, 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 right and righteous to call the George Floyd Act the George Floyd Act. Say Senator now. West. You know, I concur with uh, Senator Eckhart. I mean, I see no problems associated with it. There may be others that do. It would be um, well worthwhile if they do have a problem for them to articulate exactly what the problem is. And then we, we'll figure out whether or not we can address it. I think it's real important that we address the issue and that it happened um, and that Senator Eckhart decided to name it after Mike Ramos and myself as well as Senator Miles join her because of the larger issue. We've got to make certain that we have some systemic change where African-Americans and Latino kids are not gunned down and that law enforcement have sufficient training to know how to deal with situations, whether or not it's African-American or Latino, uh, whether or not it's a person that's mental Ill, mentally ill, they've got to have the training necessary. And I'm glad, and I don't know whether Sarah knows this, that the governor's office has agreed to work in good faith in order to try to get some reform done. Some of the things that we're advocating now, law enforcement, um, I don't want to say agencies, but unions have agreed to. There'll be some things we disagree with, and that's a part of the process. But I think that we will be able to get a lot of the reforms that we are asking for it done by working with the um, agencies and unions, uh, the chiefs of police and others. Right, Mike Ramos should not have died. Thank you, Senator. Senators, I should say. <laughs> uh, I have a quick question, if we still have time for one more question. Uh, Katie Hall with the Statesman. Sure, Katie, yeah, go, go ahead. We have, we're a little over time, but this can be our last question. I'll make it quick. Yeah, so I wanted to ask uh, Senator Eckhart, uh, you know, this bill is called the Mike Ramos bill, but the Austin department uh, for the most part has a lot of these uh, things written into their policies already. They have just de de-escalation training, even though they've been, it has been criticized in the past. And they did release the video of the shooting of Mr. Ramos, even though it was it did not show the entire encounter, such as how police approached Mr. Ramos after they shot him. I wanted to find out, do you think that this will, this bill will have an effect in Austin or primarily outside of Austin? I think it will have uh, an effect uh, both inside Austin and statewide. We need statewide standards uh, for training. We need statewide standards uh, around the release of video footage to uh, prosecution, defense, and the public. So uh, uh, I think it will have an effect inside the city of Austin as well as statewide. Um, we must, we must improve our system. Um, it's, uh, we, we simply must. This is, this, is a, this is a baseline deliverable for good government, is to have public safety that every citizen feels is is providing safety to them, not just some. We, a baseline deliverable of good government is to have public safety that every citizen feels works for them, not uh, is a threat to them. Great, well, that's all the time we have today. Uh, I wanna thank everyone for joining us, but especially Ms. Ramos and Senator West and Chris. Um, if we weren't able to answer your question or if there's anything else we can help you with, y'all, uh, have my contact information, please feel free to reach out and our office would be happy to get back to you about anything regarding this bill. Um, so thank you all for coming and I hope you'll have a great rest of the week.